So let's have a look at the login in practice hmm? in the application that you have on GitHub. So let's have a look first of all at the database. So this application is not fully aligned with the authentication. Because if you remember, we have a question and answer that have authors. And it would be nice if these authors are the logged in users. In this case, they are not. So in this application, we have that everybody can insert, well, can insert answer, can see everything, and authenticated user can only vote. So all the other options are available to everybody. This is clearly unrealistically for unrealistic for a, a complete application but in this case it was just to show how to make things otherwise we would have need to change all the apis all the server que all the database queries all the api stru all the react structure to replace the author name with the id of the user associated to that author so too many changes so this is not perfectly aligned but it's just an example how to do things and especially how to do uh, login. So let's start from the database. The database is the same database you have up to now with just one more table. That is the user table that has five fields. One is the ID that is the unique identifier of the table, of each row of the table. Then there is the email that we are going to use as the unique identifier for the user. So what's, ex what's passport called the username then we have the password that is the ash version of the password we have the salt that is the salt needed to hash the password and we have the name of the person of the user that is logged in five fields and the database has already one entry one row that is a user with email luigi at polito.it with password something three three six uh, e EI61, etc., uh, salt, and the name of the person. Just one entry. We can just log in one person. And this is the database. So now let's have a look at what the application is doing before looking at the, um, at the code. So let me install everything and start everything here. Everything is already installed. So in React in a server, we already have Express, Express Session, Passport, Passport Local, everything that we need to work with Session and with Passport. And there is no other changes in react for what concern insta installed packages so nodmon server and npm start no sorry npm run that okay hmm? so it's the same application that you have before what's changed that there is a login button here that was missing before and if you go inside one question you will not be able to vote anymore these are disabled if you click on login and you log in with the only user that we have with a wrong password you get an error message if you instead log in with the right password that is test to test it's written in the exercise file you are redirected to the home page and there is welcome the name of the user that is logged in and the login becomes logout and if you go inside one question now you can vote hmm? as you were able to vote before and if you do log out you remain in the same page no redirect in this case you log out and you lose clearly control on voting and then you can do it again. Login, log out, etc. Hmm? 
So this is deprecation. It's very similar to before. We just have this new form, the login function, the logout function, and handling mm, all the session. Mm, so that if I am logged in, and I open another tab, I'm still logged in. Because the application is checking with the server if the session ID is valid. And it is because it's the same browser with the same cookie, and so that is sent to the same server with the same request, so I'm still logged in, even if I open another tab. So this is what the application does. So let's see the code step by step. So the first thing that we can see is, for instance, this login button here. So the login button is in app. It's not in app. The login, uh, the login button is in uh, um, navbar components, and it's called by, na by app. And navbar components as these two new components one is logout button and the other one is a link that links to login that looks like a button like the other one and so the nav header now has two props that before weren't available one is logged in that is a the information is a state information defined in app that say if you are logged in or not so if i'm logged in i will i want to see the logout button otherwise i want to see the login button that sounds reasonable and the other props is and the logout that is a reference to the function to do the logout and this logout button is defined in this out component file where you have the login form and the logout button that is just a button hmm? with a non-click that does the logout operation hmm? why this is a button and the other one is a link why login is a link and logout button is a button Exactly. For the login, we need to hmm, call a route within React to, to show this page. That is another page. For the logout, we need just to, we not just, we need to do a post request or another not get request to the server and we don't have a page to show. Hmm? So we can handle the login in this way and we should handle in the other way and if we want to keep the same graphical elements we can use the button class also on the link so these are two buttons and this uh, logout is defined uh, before in in app so what there is in this auto component is all component there is the login form that is the same it's a normal form hmm? that has unsubmit uh, that will end or submit uh, will create the credential with username and password hmm? notice that we call the form email and this is of type email so if you write something like this it will tell you please this should be an email address so add the at and the domain hmm? so it validates as an email because we decided that hmm, the email is the unique identifier for the user in the server uh, but we write username here hmm, and we get the value username here clearly from the state this is a control form as any other forms we created up to now because express needs a json username something password something so whatever you want to use if you want, do want to add extra configuration experts, just use a username in the JSON file you sent to the server. So this is a normal form 
when you click uh, login it's called this props login passing the credential and this props login in the end is an api that is login again normal credential normal api a sync because a fetch as an await that does a post to the login address with an header application json with a body that are the credential username and password with credential include because we need to tell the browser to send the to send the cookie anyway even if the server is in another domain and then handling the response and the error like any other api and in this case we expect some user information coming back from the server hmm? so right now nothing uh, strange on the react perspective except this react include the creation credential includes that we must add from the login in and also in all the api protected that call it protected routes on the server and then before going on the ser on the server uh, just showing you that there is a logged in state that by default is false because when you start the application you are not logged in by default and then there is hmm, here there is the end of login function and the end of logout function that are called by the link and the button hmm. uh, so this is api login and then there will be also showing the message and the error in any case and the end of logout is here and we'll call the logout api that is in this case a delete on an api with credential includes again because we need to send the cookie with the session id to be deleted and in this case we do nothing in case of positive response because we have deleted we have closed the the the, the session and here after logout we set logged in as false because in that moment we also need to inform that the state of the react application is that you are not logged in anymore <laughs> hmm? so the react application can re-render itself since the state it changed and so the logout button becomes login automatically hmm? so this is login and logout and then we will go back here to check this use effect here but let's move on this server now so when you submit to the uh, api hmm? so first of all um where is uh, i called the login api api sessions um to be consistent with what we did before right because before when we wanted to create an answer we did a post to api answers and if we want to delete an answer we will do a post to a delete to slash api slash answer slash dd of the answer here in the login what we are going to do is create a session and when we do the logout we are deleting a session so what we I, I call the API in this way, API sessions with a post to create the, the session to do the login and a delete API session slash current to delete the current session. That is the only session that the browser has in that moment. Hmm? So to be coherent with the other APIs. But this could be also login and logout, API login, API logout, as you prefer. Hmm? Just just for consistency with the rest so in uh, the server what we have in the server in the server we have a series of passport related import passport passport local and session we have uh, credential true among the course options because we need to accept cookies and handle cookies uh, from other domain and then we have the setup of passport local strategy serialize and deserialize as in the slides so set up local strategy we will have this function verify mm, that will get username password and the callback and that we have the get user from the DAO 
for username and password if username and password are correct we'll say we'll call the callback with the user retrieve for the database otherwise we'll write username will send the next message incorrect username and password and in the get user in the user DAO it's similarly to what happens in in these slides what you have in the slide is select everything from user where email is equal because email is our identifier you get the email and you put in this case in user three information the id the email and the name because we want to show the name in the react application so, so we need to pass back the name in some in some way and then there is a script that in this case that gets the password inserted in the form and received to the json the salt that is inserted in the database to check associated to that specific email 32 bits for uh, the length of the pass or the hash function and then it's, it's created the hashing passion is check hmm, that the hashed password just created is the same of the password stored in the database and we need to do this hmm, to have the exact representation of the password hmm, because otherwise we get a string and a string is not comparable with this hashed password is an object hmm. so we need to get the hexadecimal representation of the password in the database that is, is already hexadecimal so it's just a conversion of type internal conversion of type and then we resolve the user we fulfill the promise if it's everything is fine then in the serialized user we just put the user with the three information we have and in this serialize we will have the same information we serialized and information we serialized are the information we get from the database so id email and name of the person so in the session here we are going to put email id and name hmm? so in this serialize we will get id email and name and the deserialize will make these available to rack.user in every protected route and then there is the initialization of the session with the secret the receive and the save is initialized and setting up the middleware with app.use as we did for morgan and json to register the user you are going to do it directly in the database yes okay. we are not going to see how to do the sign up it's possible to do the sign up clearly it's still um it's it's basically another form that will send the information and you need to store the password in hash and then when you logged in is just it's just this is yet another form that store information in the database there is nothing special about the registering a user nothing that involves passport for registering a user you just need the same hash function as for the login because you need to create something that is comparable but we are going to do it by hand so there is the middleware and then there is the login api that is api session that in case of success will return request.user so request.user you will have the id the email and the name of the user and passport.authenticate local is the middleware that is applied to this and it will link this with the local strategy and we deserialize and serialize method so when we log in we go here and this password authenticate will bring us will link to the verify function in the local strategy and to the session automatically and so we you when you submit a form you first go here and then from here you go to the local strategy and then to the serialize the serialize and then back here with the user in the request that is the user you have in the so in the session storage the user that you have in the serialize and deserialize method so these methods as you have seen if we log in with a wrong password or a wrong username 
is telling us how not rise, right? But what should have should should be shown here? Wrong username and password. And indeed, we expect to see what is incorrect username and password because it's what we've wrote in the local strategy function. In the local strategy function, said we get the user. If the user is fine, you get back the user. Otherwise, you propagate incorrect username or password so why are we not seeing that we are not seeing that because by default the passport authenticate local uses an internal default error message that is unauthorized it doesn't care about what you write in the error message in the local strategy if you want a personalized message you can use the long longer version of this method that is this one that still use the passport authenticate local but change the content of that and so in case of issues it will send the information you get from the callback of local strategy so this info here is the incorrect username or password you define in the local strategy and if instead if it's success you perform the login and return the requested user so with this method enabled that is the same api as the other so I, we cannot have both uncommented if you log in you will not see unauthorized, but you will see incorrect username or password. Mm? It's the same function, just finer grade, change the little bit to get the message you want through the application. So if you don't care about the message here, you can stay with the one line API to log in. If you want to pass the message, you can use this longer API. And again, also in this case, there is no change between having the login in this React application or in your movie application. It's the same function. Maybe you, will, you want to change the URL. Maybe you want to change the information you pass back. Maybe not the entire user, maybe just the name, etc. But everything else will remain the same. Hmm? So this is uh, to, to have the personalized message. And so here we have the requested user that go back to go back to the react application and so in case of error we see incorrect in case of correct that is again test to test all lowercase you will have a redirect and you will be logged in and indeed you see logout so let's check back on react what happens uh, when you receive the response here you will just return user to app.js that will memorize user in a variable will set logged in as true notice that in this case we just use a true false state for login but you can also put the user in the login state so when the login state is empty is undefined there is no logged in user when the logged in state has the user inside then you are logged in and you can then set the message that is another state to show that um, bar that is put here is an alert uh, react bootstrap alert the change color according to the message type it's available in the, all the website and that's it you put them create a message you show the message and from that moment on you are logged in 
where do you use this set logged in? For instance, you use the set logged in is the answer table where we said in the answer action that disabled for the vote is not only when we are waiting for a voted uh, rep response from the server in case the server is low but it's also when logged in is when you are not logged in hmm? when logged in is false and we need to invert false to true because disabled is disabled if true so logged in is true if you are logged in disabled should be disabled if logged in is false so you need to invert the content to disable the button so why disabling the button well we don't want that the user votes if you are not logged in which are the alternatives to disabling the button okay which are the alternative of rendering rendering inoperable the buttons not showing or disabling is i cannot click right and it's one option pros and cons of this option this is a pro is a cons you don't know why you cannot vote you cannot click here for who knows which reason you can do something else like bringing a user to the login page better with a message that say you cannot vote if you are not logging click here to log in for instance and this is a cons of disabling the button a pro disabling the button a small pro of disabling the button mm. yes it is to implement but it's not a, is there ever a pro <laughs> no it's similar to easy to implement you prevent the error in this case so in the other case you have to handle so the person click and you have to handle what happens so you have calls is more complicated to implement you have um, you can you should handle an error i'm handling the error that i'm clicking somewhere because something is clickable i'm clicking here but it cannot because this is not the right option and then i need a message and i need maybe a redirect or a link to login etc to explain why there is an error here you are preventing the error i cannot click i cannot make mistakes i cannot do anything but i'm losing the information why i cannot click so these are pros and cons which is best hmm? from what it depends in this case what's best opinions ending the errors who say ending the errors the other who say disabling the button Okay, the others are no opinions. It's bad, no opinions. Now you want to know from me which is best. Um, so actually, it, it's hard to say. Um, honestly, it's hard to say. So one other option could be in the middle, could be disabling and explaining why it's disabled. Like, if you want to vote, you have to log in. A tooltip or something that appears somewhere, say, you are not allowed to do this and but clearly in some way depends on the specific application in this case are more or less the same thing i would say preventing the error or informing the user that or preventing and informing it depends who you are thinking of if you're thinking of yourself probably yes if you're thinking of the people that really will end to use the application so let's say let's imagine it's a real application not something made up for the course but 
an application that you develop, then you maybe want that people use your application and not to go away from your application because you don't want to do complex or end all more errors on your side. It depends who, who is the center of the, of the discussion here, yeah? if the developer or, or the user of the final application. Okay, but this is just an example to disable, but it could be also handled in the other way. And, okay, so, logout, we have seen the button for logout, and in the server, it does exactly what it was reported in the slides. Call direct.logout is available to all the authorized um, requests, and send end. Let's have a look at vote, because vote is changing. So vote, when you vote in React, the button is disabled, but when you vote and the button is enabled, you have the same API that you had before with credential include, because you need to pass the cookie of the session. So the other API here doesn't have credential includes because all the other API are public. Everybody can call it. But if you want, for instance, to prevent the adding of um, uh, an answer only for logged in user, you should have credential includes also in that. Otherwise, the user will not be hmm, logged in, will not pass the information about the session. And why we need the cookie? This is not enough credential include. Because in the server, we have one more middleware. That is the middleware that I created, as defined before. That is, this is logged in. And this is a middleware that just, you just have for the protected route. So for the route, you want to be sure that the user is logged in, is authenticated. Hmm? So this is a, a middleware that works for vote, but you don't have this middleware in editing an answer in this moment. Because editing an answer is an operation for everybody. Voting is not. Hmm? So, credential includes, as and this is logged in, are in a way connected, are both needed. In one case, you say, I want to send the cookie with the session ID. In the other case, you say, I want to check that cookie, that the cookie exists and is valid as the content. So, the session ID is the right session ID. And what is this logged in? This logged in is that if rec dot is authenticated, then that we have seen in the slides and is here is a build up middleware, and you recognize the middleware because there is a next that basically does if rec is authenticated, next. So call the next middleware or call the callback of the route if there is no next middleware. Otherwise, return 401 not authorized. And the React application could handle not authorized. So in this case, we never see not authorized because we prevented the error. We handle the voting. But if we enable the button when you are not authorized, we are not logged in, you click the vote, you will send a cookie with no information because you don't have a cookie to send. And here we'll write, will not reply with the vote operation, but will reply with a 401 and a JSON error that is not authorized. And this is a middleware. Again, you can copy and paste this in your application. And every time you want to protect a route, just add is logged in as one of the middleware in your route. And you can change the message, you can change the error clearly. This is just a, a function, a normal function that's called middleware because there is the next that will link to the next middleware in the chain. So in the case of vote, we have the first this middleware and then it's the validation middleware is called, the express validator, and then the next is the callback with the request and response. This is the vote. There is one more thing to show you. 
let me refresh and open the browser inspector so when you so let me empty the console and refresh you probably don't see but there is the same error repeated twice and the error is uh, get localhost 3001 api slash session 401 not authorized and uh, and the other is on in promise error not authenticated so one question you should have an answer to is why i have the same error twice and the second answer you probably don't know the the answer the second question you don't know the answer but let's start from the second question keep in mind that we have an error twice and this is 401 not authorized that is exactly let me find it again that is exactly this right the 401 not authorized from the logged in same message but i didn't vote I didn't vote so why i've seen that message so let's have a look at what react is doing at the beginning react in this case has another use effect that is called when the page is the application is rendered for the first time that called check authentication and call the get user info api and that if there is an answer set logged in is true this get user info is is a get request to the server with credential includes that will get the user if we have the user if the user is logged in and the api session current with the get in the server in the end there are all the users it's doing something very very similar to what is doing is logged in is checking if the request is authenticated and if it is send back the user because we want the user information so we send back the user information that again are in their user object in request and if the user is not authenticated we have the error that we have seen in the console browser so now should be clear why we see the error why we see the error because when exactly because when we open the application for the first time the user effect is called and the user is not authenticated so the answer is um, not authorized and that get user info method doesn't handle the error hmm? and it's fine that the user is not authorized because we we don't have the login we don't have a session in this moment so it's correct that we are not logged in that you should know the answer but let me finish this first um, so this is normal this is expected because at the beginning we want to check if the user is logged in is not and so we see this in the console and it doesn't make sense to show this on the application this error on the application because we are not logged in so why you want to blame me to not to be logged in it's normal that I'm not logged in it's the default not being logged in hmm? so we can intercept this maybe instead of uh, having an uncooked error an exception in the promise we can intercept that but we can just do console.error console.log hmm? to show the message in the console but it doesn't make sense to show it in the application because it's the normal behavior and why we need this user fact again we need this fact because when if you are logged in and then we close this tab and open another tab we want to be logged in again we don't want to reinsert the information and so if we are logged in in the server because the server keeps the session we want to link to that session until that session is live until the session is active no matter 
if we are in one tab or another tab of the browser mm? so if we close this as a logged in user and wait five minutes and then reopen another tab mm, then we should be logged in again if nobody logged out log us out on the server so that function is to keep us logged in across the application across multiple instances of the application until the session expire or the server stop in this case since the session is in memory or somebody log us out now why twice there's a use effect mm, no oh it doesn't matter even we, even without that we will have two errors so if you comment the use effect you will still have twice the error the same error twice and if you look on the server you actually see that this is called twice everything is called twice also questions is called twice that is the other is effect is this an error is this normal who say that this is an error no who say this is normal okay why is normal it's normal it's right it's normal why is normal because in development mode that is the way we are running react in this moment in development mode react call twice every use effect and every use state by default so every time you set you do a use state a set a state or do a user effect it's called twice in development mode just in development mode and react is using it to double check for error for inconsistency because if you call twice if you have poor function and you call twice a a, the use state or the use effect you should obtain the same result both time if you don't have the same results react can complain in some way so in development mode it will call it twice if you deploy the application so you go outside of the development mode react will call once as expected but in development mode, we'll do this extra check for all the use effect and all the use state. And also for the context, I think, for the, the hook of the context. But for sure, for the state and the use effect, it's called twice. You don't see it in the state because there is no, no error. But in the use effect, it's easier to see it because you have, also in case of no error, you have request from the use effect coming twice. This is the API to get all the questions that we had before. Mm -hmm. And we got the answer because we had the, the questions, but it, it's called twice. Mm -hmm. And it's again, just, it's normal, it's just in development mode for this Dublin check of React. It doesn't happen in production mode. Okay? Okay. And this, I think should close the entire exercise. Any question about this? Hmm? So on Thursday in the lab, you will have to, to do the same thing with your movie application. Clearly there, you already have, if you remember, that each movie is associated to a user ID. And you already have a user table since forever in the lab. So differently from our example here, this will be, this column will be a user that you have in the table of the users. In this moment, these are just random strings. There you will have the connection between the user table, the information about the users you have, and the information you show in the page. Any question about this?
No? Okay, so let's move on. Let me dedicate the next 15 minutes to, we can keep this open, to <coughs> briefly speak with you. So the course is over for the theoretical part. You will still have one lab on Thursday on these things. And next week, we don't have a class here, uh, but you will have another lab, let's call it, with Luca on Thursday in the other room that will be exam simulation, sort of exam simulation, with both um, groups of labs together. So everybody in the same room at 8.30 a.m. in the morning. Um, and what will happen during these three hours? These three hours will be video recorded it will be lab, meaning that you will, uh, Luca will uh, show you a text of an exam of the past years. Let's say the first, probably will be the first exam of last year. And during this three hour, we'll work with you. So it will be interactive. That's why more a lab. Um, to start creating that exam. So an exam, a project for an exam is something that requires 20 days. So it's clearly impossible to do it in three hours plus breaks. But what we want to start doing in these three hours is getting the text, reading with you the text, understanding what it means that text because there are things that happen every year for every exams and start designing the exam project the react application and the server so which are the pis which are the components etc 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 maybe in three hours you will end up writing a little bit of code maybe not if you ask me probably not but who knows it depends how well it goes it depends how many of you are in the room so that will be video recorded clearly it will be interactive so if at a certain point Luca will say okay now take 10 minutes to read the, the text the recording will be stopped for 10 minutes because it doesn't make sense to record nothing for three, 10 minutes right and then we'll just start after but it will be it will ask you to do things to think to speak so to reason about the text, to do the first steps that you will need to do anyway for the exam. So that is what will happen the last Thursday of the semester with Luca. Uh, we are writing the exam text for the first exam. It's 90% done. We must uh, publish it on the 6th of June. That is next Tuesday in two Tuesday, two, in two weeks. Um, if it's ready a little bit before, we will publish it before. Not tomorrow, but let's say before the 6th. Um, and it will be our React application with Express as a server, with SQLite to be delivered on GitHub Classroom. And you can experiment with GitHub Classroom uh, in two days in the lab so in the lab one exercise will be try to use github classroom for your lab just to experiment with it to do a test before using it for delivering the exam hmm? so if you do the lab there is an exercise for for that do we need to create a specific account with our no you just need any github account you want because for how github classroom you will have instruction also on the web before Thursday. But the way GitHub Classroom works is that I created a classroom 
with all your IDs from the Portale. And when you logged in, and you, you have to accept an assignment that for the lab will be the lab assignment, for the exam will be an assignment for the exam that will be individual. And when you accept the assignment, the first time that you use the classroom, it will ask you to tell, tell the system which of the student ID you are. So you pick yours and that will create a private repository just accessible to you, to, you, to that specific GitHub account that you have logged in that moment. And it's the same account that you will use for the exam, but with a different repository, clearly, because that will be another assignment. And in this repository that will be created for you, there will be a template that will be the same template that you will have for the exam that has two folders. One is called client. It has an empty React application, just the one that you create with create NPM, create Vite, etc. An empty Express server, just an index.js file with import Express, and a readme file that is the document you have to deliver for the exam also. You will see it on Thursday, but it's the same document you have to uh, create for the exam. And it's a readme that will ask you to specify which are the APIs, as we did during the course, which are the main components, which are the tables in the database, which are the username and password for the user to log in, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Hmm? These are the things that you will see on Thursday. You will not be required to do that on Thursday, but that's a preview for every exam because that will be the same document for every exam of the course, independent of which of the three courses that's a share between the three courses. And this is about the exam. Any question about the exam? Any other questions about the exam? You are enrolled in 76 in this moment at the first exam. So it will be a multi-day exam. OK, so other five minutes. What happened next? Well, what happened next today is up to you. But after the exam, hopefully good thing. After the exam, this course is over. Well, this course is basically over as content today. But what happened next, what you can do after if you want to proceed with this after Web Application 1. So there is life after Web Application 1, probably. Um, so you, you have um, a few options. If you remember, just me, let me, since you will soon need to do uh, your coursework for the next year. And you have a few options. Hmm? So we are here. We are at the end of the year of this block. So which are the things that are come next, if you want, just to give you indications. So after Web Application 1, there are other uh, two courses. Uh, Web Application 2 is, I think, elective for everybody. Distributed system programming, probably not, but it's mandatory for network. But the logical, the idea that they had in 2019 was that after Web Application 1, that is focusing on front end, one, if you want to continue with web technologies, after Web Application 1, you have, you can do distributed system programming. And don't ask me why they didn't call it Web Application 2. Because this is focusing on the front end. This should be focusing more on the back end. And architecture, protocols, etc. And then after distributed system programming, still remaining on the web, you can have Web Application 2 that is expanding even more the backend, expanding the, the front end, etc. These are not strictly linked. You can have Web Application 2 without having distributed system programming, but the original idea was to have this chain from Web Application 1 to distributed system programming to Web Application 2. Then this is not happening. 
So these are three courses, let's say, that focus on three different things. Web application one is mandatory for almost everybody, and we focus on the front end specifically. Web application two will focus on the back end scalability, large scale deployment, will do more also on React, etc. And distributed system programming will should focus more on the back end. In the same way, we focus on the front end in a way and add other theoretical information about distributed architecture, distributed system, how to create APIs. We created some APIs with good sense, they can tell you also standards, way to do that. And this is continuing the technical path from the web. Continuing to the technical path, there is also mobile application development that is an elective course that has nothing to do with web, but is mobile. Uh, there's an elective course, uh, still technical. Uh, so here you will continue with web technology, here we will switch to mobile technology. And then, it's reported here, um, you also have, if you want, to focus not only on the technical aspects that you, you, will, you will have in these other courses, there is an elective course that I teach, so I don't know how much I should uh, advertise it, but uh, that is human-computer interaction that instead focus on not the technical aspects, uh, but on how to create application, an interactive system that people want to use and don't want to throw away. So maybe they are technically working, but they are terrible. So here in that course, we will not do any, almost anything technical. We will rely, you will code. If you choose this course, you will code. You will write code, but you can write code in React. There is no specific requirement on technology. You can pick whatever technology you want, you know, because the focus there in how, is how to make things usable, is how to make things that work not just technically, but work specifically, that people want to use it and understand how to use it. And just to make an example, You know this, right? Right? Yes. yes. Um, you love it, right? Uh, so this is the old, let's say, app, right? That we have. Uh, this is one example that I can bring for, for human good interaction. This is uh, a technically working application. Meaning that if you click somewhere, something happens most of the time without errors. Maybe the problem is that you don't know where to click, but that's another story. It's not that technically it's not working. You know this? You know this? Yes or no? This will be, this is, let's say, the new Polito application hmm? that was developed with a different philosophy. It was developed by students starting from a master thesis. This is the same, more or less the same function that the other application has, more or less. But it was created, well, it depends on the user interface that you like or not. It's, it's, a, it's a different uh, visual design. Do you like it more uh, than the other? Yes. It's not maybe perfect, but you like it more than the other, yes. So this was created, let's say, from students of the Human Computer Interaction course, after the course, for their thesis, for two students, uh, following the same process that we follow in that course. And you know what is the first things they did? And this is one of the first things we do also in that course. Not you. <laughs> Somebody else. What is the first things they did? Speak with student. That's not a terrible idea. The application is for students. Maybe let's ask students what they want to have in the application. Maybe. So that was the first thing they do. They speak with student in computer engineer, master degree, bachelor degree, architecture students. They just speak with students and understand what are the problems that students have with the current application, the mini problem that students have with the current application, and try to extract 
which are the need that students have to design these and then they design these and this is the it's not the first version not that speak with students and implement this this is refining they went back to students and say okay can you try this application before launching this is the beta version so they involve students because this is for students it makes sense that students can say this is not useful for me hmm? and so this is one of the reasons I would say that you like it more because it started from students point of view not from we have these APIs in the portale della didattica we can put it in some boxes in our web application in a mobile application that's a way to do hmm? and we know that it's not always working so this is just to make a, a an example of what um, or what we cover in that human computer interaction course if you want it's an elective course um, there is no written exam there is just one big project multi-step that lasts the entire semester with frequent interaction with the teachers a lot of interaction with the teachers too many interaction with the teachers and there will be three teachers one is me and I should really stop to advertise my course. So, but these are all four options that, that you want, if you want. And then clearly human computer interaction gives also the basis for doing mobile application development. The basis not on the technical perspective, but on the what should we put on the screen? What should allow the user to do? And something that we here didn't cover for many reasons, but there is just dedicated to this. So this is, these are the path forward. Mm? So if you want to remain more on the web, these are the, these two courses. I don't remember if distributed system programming is accessible to everybody, but web application two, it is. Uh, mobile application is moving on the mobile side, still pretty technical, and it's accessible to everybody. And human computer interaction is instead using the technical expertise you have up to that point or you want to acquire in other courses and put it in practice towards the creation of systems that you want to see and say okay i like this application i want to use it uh, i don't want to remove it from my phone or from my computer and never see that website again these are path forwards it's 11 15 and i think we have done enough in general in this course so have a rest a nice rest of the week and we will meet again at the exam if you have any other question in the meantime telegram email now you should know how to to reach out to me and to Luca. okay so have a nice lunch also and see you at the exam